So, when you launched QuickBooks today, it came up with Ocala Garden, um, and then it says your name after it. For application 5.5, the packet that I just handed out to you, we need to do the lawn mow um, file. So what we need to do is we have to go to File, Open or Restore Company. This is going to come up where it's going to say, what type of file do you want to open or restore? We're going to open a company file. We're going to do Next. And then what do you need to do? Select it. Okay, now, there are two lawn mows. Which one are you doing? Seven, no. Just lawn, mow. Just lawn mow because that's the name of the company. Eventually, we'll do application 74 and 85, but right now we are doing just lawn mow. So you can go ahead and open up that company. The next thing that we have to do after lawn mow opens up is we have to go in and put your name in the company. To do that, you're going to go under Company and go to Company Information. At the pop-up window, it's going to say Lawn Mow, and then after it, you're going to type in your name. Eyes up here. We're not going to do something in QuickBooks right now, but what I want to do is I want to look at Lawn Mow's QuickBook page versus where we're at with Ocala. Does it look different? Okay. We have on the main part, we have three categories. Before, we only had vendors and customers. Now, for this one, we have vendors, customers, and employees. Okay. So, when you go through to set up QuickBooks, depending on the type of company that you say you are, you will get different information that will pre-populate. A lot of this information for the vendors and the customer section is very similar to where we were at before for Ocala, but we have this new section down here for employees. So if you were looking at starting your own business and you wanted to use a uh, software like QuickBooks, you could actually use that to help track some of your employee costs and get some of your reports on there, which is why it's a very popular software for people to use. There is a way also using QuickBooks, you can actually print out a report that can then be turned into your accountant for them to go through an audit to look at to give you information too. So my sister who runs a lawn care business bought QuickBooks but doesn't understand accounting and doesn't get why you have to use two accounts and that really confuses her because she says, I just want to pay my bill for gas and just wants to go in to get cash and lower it and not go through and track for double entry accounting. So, therefore, she hates QuickBooks. Yes, the one that we're in right now. Not, not 7-4 Lawn Mow. Um, so, she doesn't use QuickBooks, but it's a, a great way to be able to track all of your information. And one of the things that you have by having one semester already of accounting is the fact that you understand how you have to have double entry accounting. You understand the accounting equation. And how keeping track of your expenses using the correct accounts is really going to help you in the future. Okay? So, we're going through and doing this for Lawn Mow, and you will see that we have, um, for Master Problem 5.5, the packet we have in front of you, um, the topic that we covered way back in Chapter 5 is reconciling a bank statement, journalizing a bank's service charge, a dishonored check, and a petty cash transaction. So. Going through and doing some um, service charge things as well as bank reconciliation. Now, on page nine of the packet I gave you is the actual transactions that we will go back to. But first, let's go through and look at our instructions. Let's start on page ten. Okay, the term reconciliation is basically an agreement. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the bank reconciliation, which is going to verify your bank statement to what is on there. Um, this is something that Jorge has to do every month. He gets a bank statement and he has to go through and prove his QuickBooks to what the office says we have for um, concessions and making sure that everything was billed and tracked correctly because sometimes there can be errors and we got to go through every month and we do that um, to, to verify it. And that is again something that you need to do on your own accounts. We already did number one. 
It says we're going to journalize transactions completed during August of the current year. Okay, can we do August of 2013? So we're going to have to do August of 2012. So you're going to need to watch the date. I think that's one of the things that caught most of you, right? Is remembering to change your date. Um, we already have the, the all of our data files. We did that originally on the first day. Put them all into your account so you can access and move from there. Our source documents are going to be a C for check and memorandum T tape. Um, we're going to prepare a bank reconciliation for lawn mow. We're going to use the information on the company data file and from our problem text. So that's going to be the page there. Um, we have a whole direction set here for going through and doing your bank reconciliation. And then we're going to be able to go through and do some journalizing. Okay. So we need to first start with our transactions. So we have to go through and look at our information. And the first thing we have here is we have a transaction on August 21st. We paid cash to establish the petty cash fund. Where do I go to make these transactions? Where? 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 Company. Okay, and then we're going to go under Make General Journal Entries. What do we have to uncheck? Adjusting Entries. And we will always start with entry number two anytime you open it up because the beginning entry was to establish all of our um, balances. So what we have to do is on the date, we have to go back to August 21st. Now, paid cash to establish the petty cash fund, $300. What's being debited? Petty cash. What's being credited? Cash. Now, you are going to get this message. This transaction is more than 90 days in the past. Are you sure you want to make this change? To turn off this warning or change the number of days, you can go under Edit Preferences Accounting. And it says important, QuickBook re recommends setting a closing date and password to prevent changes that impact your previously filed tax returns so you don't go back and change something from three years ago that you've already filed your taxes on. All I need to do is click on um, yes, that I want to say that this happened more than 90 days in the past. Okay. So I need to put in my source document of C110. And am I going to save and close or save and new? Save and new. Now, this time, did it go and keep the same date? Yes. It did. Okay. Paid cash for repairs. So, cash is being credited because your source document is a check, correct? So I have to go through and figure out what's going to be debited. Repairs. Repairs expense will be debited for $165. Your source document will be C111. <coughs> and then we will debit, or excuse me, credit cash for $165 also. And the date is the 24th. Do you see how it keeps popping up? Yeah. Should we go in and change that? No. <laughs> how to do that, you just go to Edit and then Preferences. Right here is where default date to use for new transaction. Right here it's set to use the last entered date as default, which is one of the uh, nice features, and I think it was under a. Um. So if you go to accounting and then the top go to company preferences, right here it says warn if transactions are 90 days in the past. You can just take the check mark off and it won't warn you anymore. And then click on OK. The third transaction, which is the 26th, 
You are paying cash for supplies, so supplies will be debited for $60. C112. Now the 27th is going to be for a dishonored check. Basically, Bruce wrote a check to us and he was naughty and didn't have enough money in his account. So we have to go through and actually take money out of our cash account that we thought was already there. So how much money uh, does Bruce totally owe us? 175. Okay, do we have more cash or less cash of 175? Less, because we tried to deposit a check for 140, and the bank said, oh, the one check for 140 didn't go through, plus we're charging you $35, so 175 has to come out of cash. The so cash is going to be credited 175, so therefore, accounts receivable Bruce Casola is going to need to be debited for 175, because that is how much we need to get from him and that's going to be M33. <laughs> Don't forget when you use accounts receivable you also have to choose Bruce's name under the name section. So what does it look like? <coughs> so you can go back to previous and change the date. <coughs> right here where previous is. Oh, okay. Change the <coughs> The 28th, paid cash for miscellaneous expense. Debit miscellaneous expense for $31. Memo is going to be C13. We will credit cash. The date is the 28th. Save and new. The 31st is going to be the transaction uh, paid cash to owner for personal use. So you're going to do drawing. will be debited $400. You'll have a memo of C114. And then we will credit cash. The second 31st, paid cash to, uh, to replenish petty cash account. You do not use the account petty cash. Okay? Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. We need to go through and we need to write a checkout for $255. 125 of that was supplies and 130 of it was miscellaneous expense. So this transaction is <coughs> going to take three lines. So I'm going to do supplies is going to be debited for 125 Source document C-115. Then I'm going to do miscellaneous expense is going to be debited for 130 Then I'm going to credit cash. Notice how it automatically filled in your cash for 255 mm -hmm. So it says it won't let you do something unless everything balances. Again, I made my box a little bit bigger so you can see three lines. All you have to do is just drag it down and for you to see more. Okay. So that's going to be how you journalize in QuickBooks how to replenish petty cash. Is that what you wanted to see? Oh, no. Uh, the other 31st, receive cash from sales. Cash will be debited for $350. Source document T31. Sales. Now, I want to point out something interesting about QuickBooks, so if you could look up here. Which transaction am I on here? The 
the date of the 28th, right? A entry the 6th. Now, I have three more transactions that I did on this page, correct? I'm going to go to next. Notice it jumped to number 9. Then it went to 8. And then 7. They are out of order on here, but these are all given on the same date. And QuickBooks is going through. Notice the first account title here? What is it? Cash. Starts with a C. The next one. Supplies. And then we also have another miscellaneous here. And then it went to James S. of Drawing. Okay. So those three entries, they're not in entry order, but because they are on the same date, they may appear in different orders in QuickBook, and that is fine. Don't worry about getting them to match up here because they're given on the same date. Okay. Top of page 10 is our next set of directions, and that's going to be the bank reconciliation part of it. Now, to prepare a bank reconciliation, uh, I'm reading on the bottom of page 10 first. QuickBook pulls the information from the general ledger to help you prepare a bank reconciliation. The purpose of the reconciliation is to provide data to make journal entries needed to make the general ledger cash balance equal the checkbook balance. The company does not use QuickBook's write check feature. The information about checks can only be found in the memo field of the journal. So what we need to do is we have to choose reconcile. And that is going to be found over here on the right hand side. Do you see it right here? Reconcile. It's actually built right into QuickBooks. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on reconcile. When we do that, this is going to come up. The first thing we have to do is we have to choose the account that we are reconciling. And by default, it's going to say cash because that is typically what we're going to do. Okay. Now, Set the statement date to 831, not of the current year, but of 2012. Okay, so we have to set the statement date to August 31st of 2012. <clears throat> now, the beginning balance, 3467, that is automatically filled in for us because that was what was in the account to start with. The next thing we have here is the ending balance. And it says, key the balance from the bank statement 2721 in the ending balance box. On the top of page 10, it gives you that information. So besides it being in the directions on page 11, it tells you the bank statement balance 2721. And that's what you're going to put in here, 2721. Don't click on continue yet. Okay. We have a service charge of 15. So right here where it says service charge, we need to change the date. We need to use the date of the bank statement, which was August 28th. That again is given to us. Okay. So we said there's a service charge. So now what we can do is we can actually track that service charge to what account? So, what are we going to put that to? Miscellaneous. <coughs> this uh, account does ha not have any interest, so we don't have to worry about the interest earned column. So, all we need to do is go ahead and click on continue. Now, a lot of information has already been preloaded for us. What we need to do is we have to go through and click on the checks that have um, not been cleared. <laughs> How much do we have? Seven minutes. All right. Let's do this. <coughs> now, it tells me on the top of page 10 that checks number 114 and 115 are outstanding. 
So how much was check number 114 and 115? So these last two checks, the rest of them have been paid. So I put a check mark next to them. Wait, no, I put a check mark next to them. There should not have been a check there. I put a check mark right here. Bing, 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 bing. Oh. The last two were outstanding. That's what it told me in the directions. It should have been transaction number seven and eight. Now, transaction number nine is listed over here because on this side, these are your deposits, okay? On the left side, these are our checks. And they told us which checks were outstanding. They told me these two transactions, seven and eight, and then this deposit's outstanding. Now, look right here. What does it show us? They're even. They're even. So that means what we did, what we journalized, and what the bank says, we all come out and you have just reconciled. That's how easy it is to do it in QuickBooks. It won't let you finish unless it actually equals. Okay, so we are good to go. And we can go ahead and click on reconcile now. And then that's gonna say, oh, do you wanna co uh, consolidate stuff with your bank? You're gonna say, okay. And right now it says, congratulations, your account is balanced. What you want to do is you want to do both. And we are going to try to print. Okay, I want you to print to the black and white printer. Okay, so from this drop-down menu, yes, yeah, so you want to choose just the regular 413, not 413 CLR. And then we're going to go ahead and click on print. I know your name's already going to be on there because of what? Because we changed the company name. That is how you do a bank reconciliation using QuickBooks. Master Problem 5-5. Five, five.